Tacoma. Welcome back to TV Teaching for Kindergarten. Today is Tuesday, October 13th, and I'm Mrs. Oslin. Before we get started with our lesson, we're going to do our zones check-in. A zones check-in is where you think about the emotion that you're feeling. If you're not sure what emotion you're feeling, you can always ask yourself, what's happening inside my brain? Or, what is my body doing? Just take a moment, check in. We're going to practice using an I message to explain what you're feeling to someone else. You'll remember an I message sounds like, I feel hmm because hmm. And I'm going to model that by telling Mabel how I'm feeling. Mabel, I'm feeling excited because I just heard that we're going to have a windstorm and as long as everyone's safe, I kind of like windstorms. Now, think about your emotion. I feel hmm because hmm. And turn and tell either someone in the room or if your learning buddy is nearby or you can just look at the TV and tell me how you're feeling. It's important that we practice expressing and telling people how we're feeling because people can't always tell just by looking at your face. And it's important for them to know how you're feeling so they can help you if you need help or if they can just give you space if that's what you need to. One way for me when I'm not in the green zone, one way for me to get into the green zone ready to learn is by thinking about things that make me happy, things I'm grateful for, things that are going well in my life. So, Take a moment and think about what you're grateful for. I'm grateful for, hmm. And I'm gonna model expressing gratitude to get myself into the green zone. Mabel, I'm grateful for my friends because my friends check in on me and make sure that I'm okay and that I'm happy and safe. Now, you practice expressing gratitude. I'm grateful for, hmm, go ahead. There are so many things to be grateful for. It's important for us to be taking stock, paying attention to things that we're grateful for that are going well in our lives because that can really help us see things that are good and make us feel happy. So now that we are in the green zone, we have a strategy to get us in the green zone if we're not, we are going to gather the materials that we will need for this lesson. You will need your learning buddy. I have Mabel, you might have another stuffed animal or a rock or someone in the room that you can do some thinking and speaking with. And that's all you'll need. So get your learning buddy and meet me over at the screen. You'll remember that during this time of reading and writing, we all have a job to do. My job is to be prepared, have a book ready, and have an idea of what it is that I want you to learn based on what you already know. Your job during this time is to listen, share, and read. You're a strong listener when you keep your eyes on the teacher, when you listen to books and the words that are in them, or look at the pictures, and when you think about the words and the pictures and what you already know about these books. Okay, today's an important day in our Reader's Workshop because today is the day that we get to learn about different text genres. Such fancy words. Say text. A text is pretty much anything you can read. It can be a book, it can be a magazine, it can be a sign, it can be something on your phone. That's why when we say, I will text you, it's I send someone a message with my phone that they can read. So today that the text we're gonna be talking about is a book. The other fancy word is genre. Say genre. 
Genre are different types of books. There are some books that we've been reading, like Wild About Books, where we learned all about looking at the pictures to kind of help us figure out what's happening in the story. Wild About Books is a fiction fantasy book. That means it's made up. It is not true and it could never be true because a librarian would never really drive her bookmobile into a library and she would never really give animals books. Not true, or yeah, not true, made up, tells a story. Fiction is one text genre. But excuse me, that is my book is another fiction text. Fantasy, like Wild About Books, is could never happen. Animals talking, that could never happen. This book is made up, it comes from Lauren Child's imagination, but it's realistic. It could really happen. You could have your favorite book at the library and you could one day go to check out that book and it's gone. And then you have to really think about who you are as a reader and what type of books you like and choose another book. So this is another example of a fiction book. It's made up, it tells a story. And we can tell because these pictures are drawings. Today, we're gonna read a book called Apples by Gail Gibbons. And this is what we call a nonfiction or informational text. It's real and true. And it's all about, what do you think we're gonna learn about in this book? Apples, right. Gail Gibbons is going to teach us all about apples. And when we're reading different text genres, when we're reading nonfiction or informational text that we are going to learn from, before we even open the book, we're gonna do some thinking about what we already think we know about apples. So take some think time. I think I know, hmm, go ahead. You might have said, you think you know that apples are red, or you think you know that apples are sweet. I think I know that apples grow on a tree. Now, what is something that you wonder about apples? Something you don't yet know. I wonder, hmm, take some think time. You might have thought, I wonder, how many different kinds of apples there are because I think I know they're red and I think I know they're yellow. That must mean they're different kinds. I wonder how many different kinds there are. What do you wonder? Turn and tell your learning buddy. I wonder, hmm. Okay, as we read, keep in mind what you think you know about apples and what you want to know about apples. An apple is a fruit. It grows on an apple tree. Apple trees grow in more parts of the world than any other fruit tree. They have been in existence for about two million years. Wow, now I thought I knew that apples grow on trees. And right here on this first page, Gail Gibbons is teaching me, an apple is a fruit, it grows on an apple tree. So I was right about that. The first American colonists brought apple seeds and seedlings with them from England. Seedlings, that's a word I don't know. I wonder what a seedling is. And look, Gail Gibbons right in the photograph or in the picture says a seedling is a very young, small tree. I just learned that a seedling is a young, small tree. As the colonists moved westward, they brought apple seeds and seedlings with them. Some settlers found that Native American Indians had already brought apple seeds west and had apple trees growing near their villages. Many times during the early 1800s, John Chapman traveled throughout the wilderness of Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Indiana planting apple seeds. 
Also, he gave seeds and seedlings to the settlers there. He became known as Johnny Appleseed. Some apples are grown at home, but most are grown commercially. Commercially means there's a business, a farm, and it's their job to grow lots and lots and lots of apples. So take some think time. The purpose of an informational or a nonfiction text is for you to learn something about the topic. So think in mind what you thought you already knew and think about what you wanted or wondered about apples. And then now think, is there anything that you've already learned by reading this book, Apples? Take some think time. I learned that apples have been on the earth for two million years. I didn't know that. What have you learned? Wow, lots to learn. Gail Gibbons is teaching us a lot about apples. Each year, about 250 million bushels of apples are grown in the United States, and about 28 million bushes are, bushels are grown in Canada. A group of apple trees is called an apple orchard. An apple is a firm, crisp, fleshy fruit with a hard center called a core. The core has five seed chambers. And if you look at this diagram, a diagram is a picture with labels, and it's telling us the different parts of an apple. And this apple is the Macintosh varietal. You'll see coming off the top is the stem. And then there's a picture of an, the apple cut in half, and you can see where the che seed chambers are, where the skin is, and then the white part is the fleshy part. And then on the part where it's an even smaller piece, it's showing you where the core or that center piece of the apple is, that when I eat an apple, it's what's left after I've eaten the fleshy part and the skin. Now, I didn't know that an apple has five seed chambers. I knew it had seed chambers, but I didn't know it had five. So that was a new learning for me. Let's keep reading and see what else Gail Gibbons is gonna teach us. In the springtime, flowers called apple blossoms begin to bloom on the apple trees. Each blossom has to be pollinated in order for an apple to grow. The blossoms are usually pollinated by insects or by the wind. Pollination happens when a grain of pollen from a stamen lands on the stigma of another blossom. That's why bees are so important, because bees help pollinate a lot of flowers, including apple blossoms, which has to happen if we want to have apples. After a while, the blossoms begin to die and apples start to grow. Throughout the warm summer, the little apples grow bigger and bigger. During the late summer or early fall, the apples ripen. When the trees are loaded with ripe apples, it is harvest time. Workers pick the apples by hand. I wonder how long that takes. These apples here on this page are kind of a light yellow. They're called golden delicious apples. So we're learning about all different types of apples. There was a Macintosh, there was a Golden Delicious, and I know from my own experience that my favorite type of apple is a Fuji. So think about what kind of apples do you like? Do you like apples that are red or yellow or green? Tell your learning buddy about your favorite kind of apple. Some are shipped to stores. Some are used to make apple juice, apple cider, apple jelly, apple sauce, and lots of other apple products. Some are sold in baskets at roadside stands.
During the fall, it is fun to go apple picking. Also, there are country fairs. Awards are given to the best looking apples and the best tasting apple pies and the most delicious applesauce. That is a competition I would like to be the judge of. There is apple cider too. During Halloween, there are caramel apples and candy apples. Some people bob for apples. Have you ever bobbed for apples? When winter arrives, the apple tree branches become bare. The trees will become dormant until the next spring. And dormant means alive, but not actively growing. When the trees will produce a new crop of apples. Oh, I was wondering about the different kinds of apples. Apples have many tastes ranging from sweet to tart. All apples are different shades of yellow, green, and red, or a mix of those colors. So these are some common apples grown in North America. Different types. Do a noticing, notice, how are they the same or similar? Tell your learning buddy, I notice they're similar because, hmm. You might have said they're all round. You might have said they all have a stem, which we learned is the woody part that comes off the top of the apple. How are these apples different, which means not similar? Take some think time. Tell your learning buddy, what is different about these apples? You might have said that Gail Gibbons shows us in the picture that they can be different colors. Gail Gibbons also tells us in the words that apples have many tastes, which means they all taste different. And she also tells us in the words that they're different colors, yellow, green, red, or a mix of those. This page tells us all about how to plant and care for an apple tree. An apple tree will not grow apples until it is about five to eight years old. So if you were an apple tree and you are five, you might be just now starting to, to make apples. Each spring, the tree branches are trimmed. Trimmed. This is called pruning. Say pruning. Gail Gibbons teaches us that pruning is every spring when they trim the branches of the apple trees. Most apple trees grow to be about 20 feet tall. The soil around the trees should be fertilized. The pruning and fertilizing helps produce lots of good apples. An apple a day, they are good for you. Make your own pie with the help of an adult. So Gail Gibbons also teaches us what to do with apples. And here's how an apple cider press works. That must be how they take the apple and press it to make apple cider. Yum. Here's more types. Oh, it says there are thousands of varieties or kinds of apples. Thousands. I was wondering how many different kinds of apples there were. Thousands. They are nutritious and delicious. Now, kindergartners, you'll remember, you have this form in your ELA packet, and it's called, Who Am I as a Reader? And I asked you to complete this form with an adult helping you, deciding what types of books you like. Now what I want you to do, when you go off to read today, is I want you thinking, what genre or type of book do you like? Do you like fantasy stories that are wild and made up and could never happen, like wild about books? Do you like realistic fiction, which is a story that is made up, but it could really happen? Or do you like nonfiction or informational books, like Gail Gibbons' Apples, where you learn things? 
want you to figure that out while you're reading today and draw a picture and explain to your teacher which type of book you prefer, fiction or nonfiction, and why. You're also gonna continue reading, building your independent reading stamina, practicing the three ways to read a book. Thank you so much for reading with me today. I can't wait to see your work if you decide to send it to me as well. This is your five minute break. You're gonna make sure you take the opportunity to go to the bathroom, get a drink of water, and Miss Wally will be here with you for math when you get back. Thanks kindergartners, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.
Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Welcome back, kindergartners. I hope you had a great break. Before we do anything, make sure you have your whiteboard or something to write on, something to write with, your learning buddy, and your counters, okay? Let's start our day with counting again. Yesterday, we got all the way to 40. Let's see if we can do it again. And maybe we'll go a little bit further too. Are you ready? Here we go, get your hands ready to clap on the tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. What do you think, Mabel? What comes next? 41. Did you hear? 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Hmm. What comes next, kindergartners? <gasps> yes, 50. Wow, excellent counting. Now we're gonna practice with our fingers. Are you ready? I'm gonna tell you a number and you're gonna flash your fingers. It'll go like this. I'll say, show me the number four. And you'll go four. Or you might say four. Or you might say four. You just have to show me four fingers. Are you ready? Show me the number two. Nice work. Show me the number five. Excellent. Show me the number three. Yes. Show me the number one. Show me the number eight. Hmm. That's a harder one. Oh, I see Mr. Kevin behind the video booth and he's doing this. Five and three makes eight. Excellent job, friends. All right. Now, Meet me at the smart board for our number talk. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. Let's see what we're gonna do today. Are you ready? Oh. What do you notice about this five frame? What do you see? You see one and two? What else do you see? Pebble, you see two empty boxes? How many dots are there? There's three. Excellent work, kindergartners. Now look at that one. Now watch. Maybe. Oh, there it goes. Ooh. So it went from, our board is being very touchy today. There we go. You ready? So we had three. And then what happened? <gasps> we had three. And then there was one more. Hold up three fingers. And then put up one more. How many fingers now? Think about when you count. You say one, two, three, and the next number is four. One more finger is four. So how many dots do we have? Yeah, we have four dots. How else could you figure out that we have four dots? Hmm. What do you notice? Oh, there's five boxes. Let's count and make sure. One, two, three, four, five. Okay and one of them is empty. Hold up five fingers and cover one of them. 
How many fingers do you have left? Four. Okay, let's go to the next one. <gasps> well, this one looks different. This is a tent frame. How many dots do you see? Two. Two dots in the ten frame. <gasps> Wait a minute. Go back. There were two. And then we put two more. I'm going to show you what that looks like in an equation. Are you ready? Maybe, if my pen wants to work. Okay. We had two, and then there were two more. That is the same as, yes, kindergartners, four. Excellent mathematical thinking. If we have one, two, and we put two more, now we have three, four. Excellent. Oh, hmm. Look at these ones. And then what did they do with the bottom dots? They're, they were right here, but they're not there anymore. They moved one here, and they moved one here. So how many dots do we have? Four, and how do you see it? Three and one make four, yep. Pebble, how do you know? You knew it was four because it was the same amount as before, and that was four? Okay, excellent thinking. Are there any other ways you know? Great mathematical thinking, kindergartners. Meet me on over at the whiteboard, and we're gonna solve some problems today. Today's a fun day. Are you ready? Okay. So it says, how many? Go ahead, count. Private think time. How many do you think it is? Tim said there's four, and Lee said there's five. So go ahead and count. How many do you think there are? Remember to touch each one as you count. And as you do that, I'm going to put out puff balls to match. One, two, three, four, five. Who was correct? Nice job, friends. There are five soccer balls. Say five soccer balls. Which friend was correct, Tim or Lee? Lee, because Lee said five. Right here, it says five. All right, let's go to the next one. Ooh. Oh, I'm gonna go back over to the smart board for this one because I'm gonna need to do some circling. Are you ready to get your eyes looking? We're gonna be looking for different groups of objects. Let's go. Okay. Oh, what do you notice about this picture? What do you see? Oh, you see people on a bench. What else do you see? You see flowers in a pot, Pebble? Okay. What do you see, Mabel? You see birds? Do you see a group of five? Hmm. A group of five. Oh, I see one. We should see if we see the same one. Are you ready? Here's my group of five. Five flowers in this pot. Did you see that five? Great, if you saw a different one, we'll come back to five. Hmm, who sees a group of two? What do you see a group of two? Hmm. Go ahead, tell me, what do you see? Or tell your learning buddy. I heard two big birds. Okay. I also heard two flowers in the pot. And then I heard two green apples, just like in our book today that you read with Ms. Oslin. Okay. Hmm. Does anyone see, now this is a challenge question. Are you ready, kindergartners? Does anyone see two groups that would make five if we counted them all together? Hmm. Two groups that would make five if we counted it 
all together. Hmm. Try and talk to your learning buddy. Do you see two groups that if we put them together, it would make five? Hmm. Oh, I think I see one. Do you see it, Pebble? This is a group of two people on a bench. And this is a group of three people on a bench. And all together, there's one, two, three, four, five. <gasps> there's five people on the bench. But they're on separate benches, aren't they? Does anyone see a group of four? Four red apples, excellent. What about a group of three? Three acorns? Awesome. Are there any other groups of three hiding? Hmm. Oh. Mr. Kevin just went chirp as a clue. Do you see the group of three? Yeah, three birds in a nest. What about a group of zero? Is there anything that's holding zero? Private think time. Look really hard. What is holding zero in our picture? Hmm. Oh, look. There's zero flowers in the pot. That's a good one. Is there anything else that has zero in it? Oh, look at this. Look at this nest. Zero birds in the nest. I think there's one more zero. Are you ready? Zero children on the bench. Zero, none there. Hmm. What about one? Is there anything that there's one of? Yes, the sun. There's one sun in the sky. What else is there one of? Hmm. <gasps> There's one squirrel getting acorns. There's one rectangle pot right here. Do you see the rectangle pot right here? There's only one that's a rectangle. Ooh, those are tricky. Is there anything we missed? <gasps> what about the number four? I think there's something with four that we're missing. What are we missing that has four? Four blue flowers. Excellent job, kindergartners. You did a great job of looking closely to count. All right. Now, each of these pictures has a number and we have to decide which object is going to match the number. Let's do purple. What number is this? This number right here. What number? The number four. Private think time. Which picture shows four? Hmm. Which picture shows four? Tell your learning buddy. Is it the pink flowers or the blue flowers? You better count them. Let's start with the blue flowers. One, two, three. Is that four? Nope. One, two, three, four. Is that four? Yes. So we draw a line, two, and I'm actually gonna circle around it. Four. Let's move to the birds. What number is this? It's three. Great job. Which nest has three. Which nest has three birds in it? Hmm. Does this nest have three birds? No, it has zero. Does this nest have three birds? Let's count the birds. One, two, three. It does. We connect to the three. Okay, let's look at the benches. What number is this? It's the number zero. It's the silliest number, I think. Which, ben which bench has zero people? Which one? 
Which bench has zero people? The blue bench, zero people. And our last one, the, what number is this? It's the number five. Which tree has five apples? Hmm. Which tree has five apples? Let's count this tree. One, two, three. Is that five? Nope, let's count the other tree. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. If you thought that tree, you had great math thinking. Now, let's head on back over to the whiteboard so we can decide which one has the group of five. Okay, so I'm gonna clear. You go ahead, study the picture. Which group of worms has five worms in it? Hmm, I'm gonna draw them here. There's one like this, like this, and like this. You go ahead and draw on your board too. One like this, one like this, one like this, this, one like this. And it says five. Go ahead and take your counters and count each group. We'll do it like this. One, two, three. Okay, and then we're gonna do the other one. Are you ready? One, two, keep counting. Okay, which one has five? Draw the line. Which one has five? Hmm, tell your learning buddy how you know. Which one has five? Okay, which one do you think? Is it? the group on the left, I mean on the right or on the left? The group on the left or on the right? Which one? How do you know it's the group on the right? How did you figure that out? You touched and counted? Let's check and see. One, two, three, four, five. The last number I said for the last item in the group, that's how many there are. If I touch and count to five, that means there's five. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent job. Okay, reset your board. And we're gonna go back to the smart board to go over your assignment for today. Are you ready? Let's go. So today you're going to do page 47 and 48. On page 47, you'll need an adult to help you read the directions at the bottom. It tells you to find groups of two, three, four, five, one, sorry, of one, two, three, four, and five, as well as groups of zero. So you're gonna circle just like we did together today. And then you're going to match the number that matches the picture for two, one, zero, and three. Meet me on up at the front. All right, kindergartners, you are excellent problem solvers. You are. So you're gonna practice saying that to yourself. I'm a good problem solver. So I'm gonna say that and I'm gonna practice. Watch me. I am a good problem solver. Your turn. Excellent work today, kindergartners. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.